Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Confused about all the graphics card choices available on the market today? Feeling squeezed between all of the options? Today we have 16 graphics cards to compare in a single video. This is going to be a big one, folks. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink of choice, and let's unpack this, shall we? Okay, this is much simpler with all those cards out of the way. I can see you, you can see me, and I don't have to worry about the tower of video cards collapsing, which didn't happen even once, I swear. Today we are looking at 1440p resolution, and this is perhaps the most interesting resolution to look at for all of these cards. The 1080p and the 4K version of this video will be down in the video description below. But at 1080p, they'll all do that within reason to some extent explained in that video. There are limits. And then at 4K, well, frankly, you got to spend a lot of money to keep up with the latest and greatest games, and so that's kind of all going to be skewed towards the high end. All of these cards are viable options for 1440p, depending upon what you play. After the benchmarks, I will discuss in detail in each group of cards and at each price point, which I would buy and why, what for, what games, etc. Yes, I know there's a lot of charts here, but there's only so many games I can put in the video, and I'll talk in more general terms later in the video. Today's video is sponsored by Recover It Data Recovery. This is a free tool that you can download to recover all kinds of data. Files simply deleted, files in your trash, formatted drives, partitions destroyed, and complete device recovery. For example, let's say you accidentally format an SD card that has important pictures or video that you just filmed. Not to worry, this software will take care of it. No matter what you lost, just recover it. Graphics, documents, video, other files, emails, audio, and more. High success rate recovery on any kind of device. Download Recover It Free Edition using the link in the video description below to try it out on your own computer, hard drives, external devices, a recycle bin, or even a completely crashed computer. Recover It is completely free to use for the first 100 megabytes of data, and as you can see here, you can select all your drives and folders for where your lost data may be and restore from there. If you need more than 100 megabytes of data recovery, I recommend Recover It Ultimate. For $69, you get a lifetime license and updates for one PC and bootable media. If your computer will not boot or you have important data on your C drive, shut it down and restore your data from bootable media to make sure that it's not overwritten by Windows. And now, back to the video. Today, we have 20 charts for you to look at. It'll take us some time to unpack those, and that is why this is 1440p only. 60 charts total between the three main resolutions. This video would be an hour and a half long if I tried to put everything into one video. And this did take a long time to make, so we cut it into the uh, resolutions 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. We have, of course, average and minimum frame rates, but we also have dollar cost per frame per second, and we also have percentage performance difference. You'll be able to see on a single chart from the RX 580 all the way to the RTX 2080 Ti how much faster in terms of percentage at 1440p averaged across these games each one of these cards is. So it's different ways to look at the same set of data that might give you an insight and help you decide which one is right for you. 16 graphics cards is a lot, but there are a couple of cards worth considering which aren't on this stack. I don't have them tested through this suite of benchmarks, so they're not included. I will talk about them a little bit more after the video, but in brief, the GTX 1070, 1080, and 1080 Ti used might be worth considering depending upon what you can get them for. It's debatable as to whether you should buy these or those but I understand some people prefer the absolute max dollar cost per frame per second, which used genuinely is going to give you most of the time. Those aren't here just because of time. There's a couple of new cards that aren't here because they have not been released yet as of the date of recording this video. I record this stuff in advance, put it together, upload it to Floatplane. Thank you, Floatplane subs, if you're watching this early. So the RX 5500, the low-end version of the RX 5700 isn't here because I don't have one yet. The uh, GTX Supers, the 1660 and 16Ti Supers, they're not here yet because they haven't been released yet, so I don't have one. I will do videos and reviews on those when they come. So for now, these are most of the current available cards on the market. 
The test bench configuration today is the i9-9900K at 5 GHz fixed on all eight cores installed on a Z390 ASRock Tai Chi motherboard. We have 16 GB of DDR4 4000 CL19 RAM provided by Patriot, very good stuff. Our boot drive is a Samsung 970 Pro, very sweet. And then all of the games were run off of a two terabyte Intel 660p NVMe drive, which I have reviewed. It is a very, very good drive, perfect for installing all of your games onto. Everything in this video will be linked in the video description below. All of these cards will be down there. There's gonna be a ton of links when you expand that video description. Amazon, Newegg, and eBay. Those are our affiliate links. They support the channel. If you like this content and you like what we do, please consider using those when you're shopping. Even if you buy something that's not in this video. If you buy a GTX 1070 or 1080 Ti, which isn't on the desk, use that eBay link, go over there and buy one, and it supports us and it is greatly, greatly appreciated. If you like all this content and analysis and you like the charts, but you don't like having to scroll through a long video to get there, I've got a solution for you. As a benefit to our patrons, Patreon is linked down in the video description below. All 60 charts from all three videos have been uploaded to three posts over on Patreon. In addition to early access, in fact, while I'm filming this, they're all already uploaded over there, so thank you if you're a supporter. But go over there and sign up and directly support the channel, and you can get all 60 charts in one place in an easy-to-read format. And with that being said, I'll talk more about these after the charts, but for now, let's get directly to the benchmarks. Our first benchmark today is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 1440p, very high detail. I've picked out the two 400R cards to show you side by side so you can watch their performance in real time. Of course, I'll have the chart with all 16 graphics cards in just a second along with the other games. But I want you to have a chance to see what the current mid-range, yes I know $400 is now mid-range, does in a game like this. To be sure... This game is not very well optimized. You can get more performance by turning it down to high detail. I do not have it running at ultra. Please be clear, there is a setting higher than this, actually. But if you turn down the clouds and the shadows and a few other things, look at that water. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you're watching this at 720p, heavily compressed on YouTube, it won't look as nice. But I gotta tell you, looking at the original native capture files here as I'm voicing this over, that's just stunningly beautiful at 1440p but we are just above 60 frames per second on 400R graphics cards. Something to keep in mind if you want a future. We have 72 frames per second average on the 5700 XT versus 71 frames per second average on the 2060 Super, so we are neck and neck. If you want more performance, you either have to wait for Big Navi from AMD, which hopefully will come sometime in 2020, the RX 5800 or 5900, or you can just buy one of the really nice expensive RTX 2070 Super, 2080 Super cards and get, frankly, not much more performance. $700 for 83 frames per second for a 2080 Super? Ouch! You have to go all the way up to the 2080 Ti before it becomes a substantial performance jump. I think the value here is the 400R cards. Now, to be honest, this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so don't pay it too much mind, but I think it's tragic that an RTX 2080 Ti at 1440p at very high detail cannot even maintain 60 frames per second. It's the game, what can I say? If you're looking for value for the money, here is the dollar cost per frame per second chart. The cards are reasonably priced until you get until the 2060 Super or the 5700 XT. The more expensive cards are faster, but my lord, you really start to pay for them. A 2080 Super is not what I would call a deal. And the 2080 Ti is simply for people who don't care what the value is because they just want the best. At 1440p, an RX 580 really doesn't run Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but if you're curious, a 5700 XT is 89% faster than an RX 580. The 2080 Ti, for what it's worth, is 139% faster, which is better, but really actually not very good considering its price tag. Notice the RTX 2070 is identical in performance to the 2060 Super. 
Next up, we have Far Cry New Dawn, the full price DLC to Far Cry 5. Wait, did I say that out loud? In any case, we have the RX 590 on the left and the GTX 1660 on the right. Notice the VRAM use. This is ultra detail, and of course it's the built-in benchmark, so they should be identical. However, NVIDIA has long since had better texture routines and texture compression, which is why throughout most of these benchmarks, you're going to see the NVIDIA cards actually use less VRAM. So even though that the GTX 1660 only has 6 gigs of VRAM, in truth, it's actually closer, not quite equal, but closer to the 8 gigs that AMD offers, it's a topic that I've considered making a video on, but just never got around to, so here you go, video, there you go, there's the VRAM usage difference. In any case, we're not quite at 60 frames per second here, but again, we are running at ultra detail. Ultras for screenshots, highs for playing the game. I actually don't think you should play this at ultra, I think you should play it at high, but we're doing stress testing, so I'm showing you the worst case scenario. 58 frames per second average on the 590 versus 60 frames per second on a 1660. Now, the 1660 Super is not here. I do not currently have one. I will be getting one very, very shortly. They've just come out or they're about to. So by the time you watch this on YouTube, you're bound to say in the comments, dude, where's the Super? Well, at the time I did this, I didn't have it, but it's on the cusp of arriving. It'll be closer to the 1660 Ti. And if that's the case, if you can get like 67 or 68 frames per second on a $239 1660 Super, that's actually a pretty compelling deal. 80 frames per second on Vega 56, 93 on the 5700, 92 on the 2060 Super. There's actually quite a few reasonably, choice to, reasonably priced cards here that are well above 60 frames per second. In terms of minimum frame rate, the Vega 56 and the RTX 2060 both kept it above 60, and frankly, a 1660 Ti or a 1660 Super would be above 60 at high detail instead of ultra. Dollar cost per frame per second, once again, up to $400 is the sweet spot in getting value for the money, not counting the used cards, which are a tremendous value for the money. An RX 580 is the deal here, except of course at 1440p, not really. Spend more, get more, but if you go above 400, you're paying a premium. The RX 590 is a whole 9% faster than a 580, so I wouldn't pay much more than 9% more for it if you're going to buy one. Check out the Vega 56, 51% faster than an RX 580, and well, probably 40-ish percent faster than the 590. If you want some real performance, an RX 5700 XT is nearly double the performance of a 580, and almost double the performance of a 590. That's an impressive card for $400. A 2060 Super does not quite keep up. It did in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but not in Far Cry New Dawn. Gears 5 is a fairly new game that runs reasonably well on these cards. We have the Vega 56 on the left and the RTX 2060 non-super on the right. Just like the last game, notice the VRAM usage. It's a, well, what, about 6 7% lower on the RTX card. Now that doesn't completely make up for the VRAM. Notice that we're using over five gigabytes of VRAM on an RTX 2060. That's not really a 1440p card. If you're buying a 2060, buy it for 1080p. But I'd say the same thing about a Vega 56 at this point going into the end of 2019. Regardless, notice the frame rate is spot on the money. These cards are really, really close in performance. A new Vega 56 is about the same price as an RTX 2060, at least one of the ones that's on sale or has a mail-in rebate. But used Vega 56s can be found for much, much less. So if you're looking for this level of performance and don't mind used, well, Vega 56 might very well be your card. However, how long are these performance numbers going to hold over the next, say, two, three years as new games continue to come out? If you want to overbuy your card, the RX 5700 XT for 400 or an RTX 2070 Super, the 77 frames per second of the 5700 XT or the 80 frames per second of the 2070 Super, at least give you a little bit of headroom. And of course, these are at ultra detail, lower to high, and you'll get more performance. Looking at the minimum frame rates, you're going to see here that the 5700 XT and the 2070 Super both held at least 60 frames per second, but the 2060 Super did not. It wasn't off by a lot, 55 versus 62, 
but there is a fairly decent performance difference of 11 frames per second between a 2060 and a 2070 Super here at 1440p. If you're okay to buy a used car, the Vega 56 is a tremendous value for the money in Gears 5 at 1440p. If you want a new card, the 5700 XT for 1440p would be my choice, or the 5700 for 1080p, or a 2060 or 2070 Super. The dollar cost per frame per second here on the 2070 Super is extremely reasonable. You do get a good solid performance boost. The 2080 Super, of course, makes no sense, and we're not even going to mention the price of the 2080 Ti, but again, if you don't care, rock on. Percentage performance difference, the Vega 56, which did run at 60 frames per second, is 41% faster than an RX 580. Since you can buy an RX 580 for $100 and a Vega 56 will run you $200, the RX 580 remains the deal, but since it's no longer a 1440p card, and it's debatable as to whether it really was, at least for AAA games, it doesn't really matter. If you, however, want to have a card that lasts for a while, I would caution you on buying either a Vega 56 or an RTX 2060 for 1440p AAA gaming, because I just don't think they have a lot of future in front of them. 5700 XT or 2060, 2070 Super is actually a better long-term value. Next up, we have Ghost Recon Wildlands, the game I've covered many, many, many times. But this is coming to an end because Ghost Recon Breakpoint has just been released as I'm voicing this over. But of course, I can't grab 16 graphics cards and immediately go test a brand new game just to update this. So you're going to have to live with Wildlands. Now I have, as I voice this over, about 25 hours in Breakpoint already. And despite the middling reviews, I'm having quite a bit of fun. It is more demanding to play than Wildlands, that's for sure. My i7 8700K and GTX 1080 Ti at 4K high detail are not maintaining 60 frames per second. Not that that has anything to do with this 1440p video, but it is what it is. Two different graphics cards here at two different price points the RX 5700 and the RTX 2060 Super. These are $100 difference in price, but the reason I picked them is because the RTX 2060 was six frames per second slower than the 5700. The Super was four frames per second faster, so it's kind of a trade-off. Which one do you pick? Which one do you show? And I thought, well, I'll just put the Super up there. But I wanted to feature the 5700 because in terms of value, some of those are getting close to $300, especially on daily deals or with a rebate. And as those creep down to $300, they'll be kind of interesting. That being said, if you want to play new games, because Wildlands is not a new game at 1440p, get at least a 5700 XT or a 2060 Super or a 2070 Super. Notice that there is a 10 frame per second difference between a 2060 and a, uh, and a 2070 Super. Is it worth the $100? Well, not really on a dollar cost per frame per second, but if you want the performance and you want some future, maybe it's worth paying the extra 100 bucks. You do pay a premium. It's $5.62 per frame per second on the 2070 Super versus $5.06 on the 2060 Super. That is higher. It is not as good of a deal. But then again, it's not massively so. You're paying a 10% premium to get an extra 10 frames per second. Do you care? Well, that's a personal decision. The truth is, though, those numbers would compress when put into a full system. Of course, it's worth noting that the RX 5700 XT is cheaper than both cards, and that's something to consider. So, fun fact, the RTX 2080 Ti is two and a half times faster than an RX 580 for only 11 times the price. That's not a deal. The RX 5700 XT is, however, at least somewhat reasonable at almost double the performance. A 2060 Super is 80% faster, and so on. Moving right along to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we are back to our two 400R cards, the RX 5700 XT and the 2060 Super. Again, the same VRAM thing as all the other videos. The RTX card uses less VRAM because of texture compression and better memory management. But interestingly enough, it's also using less main system RAM. Take a look at that. 5.5 gigabytes versus 8.7 gigabytes 
on the uh, 5700 XT. Considering these are the same test bench, same, same configuration, same Windows installation, same program, same everything running in the background, that one's kind of interesting, but these were tested basically exactly the same. Performance-wise, 79 frames per second for a 5700 XT versus 83 frames per second for a 2060 Super. Yes, you can all yell at me. DLSS was turned on. I know it's not going to run as fast when it's not turned on. So be it. In any case, that's what it got. My biggest concern is how long these cards are going to stay 1440p. I know a lot of people want to call them 1440p cards. A lot of people want to say, hey, yeah, man, if you spend 400 bucks, of course it's 1440p. Look at the performance, 79 and 83 frames per second in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Clearly, they're, but yeah, they are 1440p cards for today. For three years, I doubt it. I do not expect to maintain 60 frames per second at 1440p for three years on those cards which is either a sad indictment of the price of cards on the market today or a reflection of game developers being lazy. I don't know which, but uh, we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of years. In any case, yeah, the uh, RX 580 and the GTX 1660 line are definitely not 1440p cards anymore. For $400, you can buy a video card today in either the 5700 XT or 2060 Super that barely does 60 frames per second minimum at 1440p in a one-year-old game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for those of you who missed it, came out in 2018, not 2019. So yeah, you know, it just depends upon your personal uh, tolerance for low frame rates and frame variability. If you really want to maintain performance for a longer period of time, go buy yourself an RTX 2080 Super. 89 frames per second minimum. I know, I know, it's crazy expensive. I know it's not the value, at least not now, but it should at least last you at least three years. You are paying a premium to get that 2080 Super in three years, but of course, if it means you don't have to upgrade your graphics card as soon, eh, maybe it's not as bad it's not a deal though. I mean, I'm not going to call it a deal, but it is a premium experience for a longer period of time if you prefer that phrasing. Otherwise, it's the same as you've seen in all the other charts. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. The RTX 2080 Ti is more than triple the performance of the RX 580 for 11 times the price. Um, in any case, getting more serious, nearly double the performance on the 400R cards for four times the price. Essentially, you're paying a huge premium. I know I'm pricing the RX 580 at the used price, but there are so many of those available on eBay for 100 bucks right now. If you want a 1080p card, go buy a 580. Thank you all for sticking around for after all of those charts. There's a lot of information in there to go through. You all get two gold stars for being here. At this point, I'm going to separate the cards out and put them in groups on the desk and talk about them in terms of their 1440p gaming, either now and in the future. But before we do that, if you love this content, which takes a long time to put together, this is a lot of stuff. In addition to Patreon, which I mentioned earlier before, you can support us in several ways down in the description, in addition to the affiliate links by shopping. You can support us on Floatplane and get early access. And for those of you watching this on Floatplane, thank you. But this video was uploaded to Floatplane about a week, sometimes more, and you can watch it ad-free and in higher quality over there. You can also support us by hitting the Join button on YouTube directly next to the subscribe button. And you can also subscribe to either myself or my wife over on Twitch, which is a nice way to support us if that uh, is an option that works for you. Or just use the affiliate links when you shop. Either way, it's appreciated. A quick note before we get to everything, I did not mention this in the 1080p video. I'm gonna mention this here because I just did the whole spiel on how to support us. Some of these cards were in fact samples from the manufacturers and we're greatly appreciative to them sending. And this isn't sponsored by any of these companies in any way. We sometimes have third party sponsors, but we bought a bunch of these cards. So I'll go through them for you. The RX 580 up here from Gigabyte, that's a product sample. The Sapphire Pulse, RX 5700, I had to buy that card. The 1660, that was a sample from MSI, but the 1660 Ti was not. The 2070 Super from MSI was, the Radeon 7 was not, I had to buy that card. 
The 2060 from Gigabyte, I bought that card. That was not a product sample, but the 2060 Super was. It's very interesting. It's hit and miss as to what they send you. The 5700 XT was also a sample, so there's that. The 570 from ASRock was a sample, but the two Vega cards were not. Power Color and Sapphire have never sent me anything, so I had to buy those two cards. The 2070 from Gigabyte was not a sample. I had to buy the 2070. The 2080 from MSI was also not a sample. The 2080 Super from Gigabyte was not a sample. I had to buy that one. But thanks to Gigabyte, the 2080 Ti sitting right here was. I go through that to give you an idea of the fact that while, yes, I do get sent stuff, and you see that we YouTubers get sent things, we don't get sent everything. And I spent a decent amount of money to fill out the product stack here. And if you want to know where your support goes on Patreon, Floatplane, uh, YouTube member, Twitch, all of the money that we get as direct support from our viewers just goes to buy stuff for the channel. So your support genuinely is appreciated. So what do I really think of all these cards? Well, we're gonna break this down for you right now. All of these comments are related to 1440p gaming. You wanna see my 1080p comments? They're different in the 1080p video, and my 4K comments are also different. Both videos will be linked in the video description below. Please watch those, it certainly is appreciated. Now. Is the RX 580 a 1440p gaming card? Yes and no. It depends. What game are you playing? If you want to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, no, it is not a 1440p. I mean, it will maybe, a, you know, low detail or medium with a few things turned off. It's the wrong card. On the other hand, World of Tanks, World of Warships, Grand Theft Auto V, uh, if you want to play non-current AAA games, either older AAA games or free-to-play games or casual games, it actually is a great 1440p card. So it very much depends upon what you want to play on it as to whether or not it handles it. For $100, this is an amazing value for the money. If I was looking for a 1440p card and I was on a budget, and it was for one of my kids, my kids play Fortnite, they play The Sims 4, they play Minecraft, they don't play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. They don't play Shadow of the Tomb Raider. They don't play Ghost Recon. For the stuff my kids play, this is actually all they would need. And it's a tremendous value for the money. Now the 590 is not because it's a 580 with slightly higher clock speeds and they're currently going for $50 more used on eBay. So that, that makes no sense whatsoever. Unless when you watch this video, a 590 is just a little bit more than a 580, in which case by all means go for it, rock on. This is an amazing value. Now the Vega cards are actually really decent 1440p cards. I'm not jumping up and down about their future at 1440p. Yes, they have HBM. Yes, they're, they're nice cards, but the Vega cards have never sold in the volume that the Polaris cards, the 500 series have, and they've now been replaced by Navi. And so they're effectively end of life at this point. How much future support over the next three years they're gonna get for the latest and greatest games to play at 1440p is questionable. I am willing to bet that AMD over the next three years will put more driver optimizations into the RX 500 series than they will into the Vegas. They have sold probably 20 RX 580s for every one Vega they've sold. They're just not volume products, but they've sold millions and millions of these. These will be supported for a very long time to come. Now that's looking into the future a bit. That's my magic eight ball trying to see into the future. And that's an opinion. You're free to disagree with me. I would skip the Vegas if 1440p gaming in terms of AAA gaming is what's important to you. On the other hand, for casual gaming, if you find one cheap, then by all means, you're fine. I would skip the blower cards because they're hot and loud. And why do I make that distinction? Because the latest AAA games require driver optimizations, whereas casual games do not. If you want to play World of Tanks at 1440p for the next five years, Actually, an RX 580 might or might not do that because they're adding optimizations and a few other things to it, but the Vegas will. So if that's what you're doing, then by all means, but for AAA games, I'd skip them. That leads us to our first two new cards among this collection, the GTX 1660 and the GTX 1660 Ti. If you look at the benchmarks in this video, you might very well conclude that the 1660 Ti is a great 1440p card. Yeah, kind of. No, it isn't. It is today in limited form, but for the price, it makes no sense. This is currently a $280 card. For $30 to $40 more, you can get an RX 
uh, RTX 2060 or an RX 5700. Why would you buy this? This is too expensive for what it is. Now, I see value in the GTX 1660. For everything I just said about the four used cards that were on the desk, if you have a $200 budget and you're coming, if you're looking at the monitor at me right now and you're saying, Tech, I don't want to buy a used video card. I'm not going on eBay. What new card can I buy? And I only want to spend $200. You're looking at it. This is your current available option. In a couple of weeks from when I'm filming this, the RX 5500 may very well be an option. I don't know its price. I don't know its performance. It doesn't exist at the time I'm filming this, but it's coming. There's going to be a four and an eight gig version. I suspect the four gig version will be 149 and the eight gig version will be 199. And if that's the case, 199 for the eight gig version will probably be where it's at, but I can't tell you where that's at today. But this video is all about 1440p. And if you're casual gaming at 1440p, rock on with a 1660 or step up to the higher end cards. But really, if you want to play more advanced games, skip these. Finally, that brings us to the mainstream cards of this generation. And yes, I know three to $400 is not traditional mainstream. If you've been in the video card business for the past 20 years, you're probably furiously running to the comment section to say, but tech, what are you talking about? 200 to $250 is the traditional mainstream price point. Three to $400 is the premium price point. You're not wrong, but the world changed. Don't shoot the messenger. Complain to uh, NVIDIA and AMD because they set the prices. Allow me to explain what I mean. If you want to play at 1440p, which is what this video is all about, if you want to play the current new splashy big budget titles, the upcoming Fallen Jedi from uh, EA, which <laughs> that'll be interesting to see how that follows up after the previous Battlefront 2. If you want to play Cyberpunk 20, uh, 2077, if you want to play Watch Dogs Legions, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, if you want to play those sorts of games at 1440p and you want to still be doing it three years from now without having to buy a new video card, you've come to the wrong place. These will not do that. At least so says my crystal ball. I, of course, could be wrong, but my judgment and my opinion based upon having been doing this for a very, very long time is that this price point for three years is 1080p, not 1440p. I think if you buy one of these cards for three years of 1440p gaming, playing those sorts of new games, you're going to be very disappointed about 18 months from now, unless you like playing on low and medium detail. These are 1080p cards for 1080p high detail AAA gaming for three years. On the other hand, if you're looking for something to bridge you to the next generation of cards, if you're on a tight budget and you say, look, three to 400 is all I've got to spend. I want to play AAA games today. I want a new card and I'm okay to replace my card in maybe 18 months when the 30 series are out or, or Navi 2 is out. Fair enough. These will do that. Right now today, these will play all games at 1440p, 60 plus frames per second, high detail or better without a problem. They just won't do it for very long. That's a personal preference. And I just make that distinction clear because I've been saying this in several other videos and I've gotten a lot of feedback from people going, what are you talking about? $400 is 1440p territory. To which my response is, why? Because you want it to be? That's not how it works. The games run the way they run and the cards perform the way they perform and they cost what they cost irrespective of what you want them to do. Now you can be angry, you can be upset, but please don't direct that towards me. I didn't set the prices or design the cards. I'm just reading the tea leaves and telling you what I think about the future. Let's take a look at the higher end cards, shall we? AMD's Radeon 7. If you find one of these on a super cheap deal, well, it's actually a nice card, except it's loud and it's hot and at the current prices at the end of 2019, it's ridiculous. So it's a hard pass if this is $700. If you find one for 350, grab it. That brings us to the very top end of the product stack. Nvidia has no competition here, so they charge premium prices because let's face it, they can. Again, I didn't set the prices, don't yell at me, yell at Nvidia for this, or maybe yell at AMD for not having big Navi out. There was supposed to be RX 5800 and 5900 coming, but if they don't come for a year, 
what good does it do? Because these things will be replaced in a year because they come out with new cards every year. In any case, we have the $500 RTX 2070 Super, the $700 2080 Super, and then we have the 1100-ish. You can find some of these for 1000, some of these for 1200, but I'm going with 1100 RTX 2080 Ti. When did a consumer graphics card become $1100? Actually, before you all say Nvidia is ridiculous, AMD had one called the R9 295X2, which granted was a Crossfire single unit card, it was $1,500 when it came out. So AMD has done that as well. I'm not excusing Nvidia, but I'm, you know, they've done that as well. If you came to this video and your question to me is, you want to buy a 1440p high detail 60 to 100 frame per second graphics card that's good for the next three years, you have exactly one choice, the 2080 Ti. I know. I know, it's ridiculously expensive for that objective. I do not believe that a 2080 Super is going to do that. It will come close if you're willing to make compromises to save the price difference between these cards, $400, fair enough. But if you wanna play between 60 to 100 frames per second smoothly, if you wanna play at 1440p high detail or better, in Cyberpunk 2077, in Watchdog Legions, in whatever comes out in the next three years. We are talking 18 months post-launch of next generation consoles. We are one year, well, actually two years post-generation consoles. We are one year away from the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet launching. Those have Navi graphics and Zen 2 processors. They are gonna be maybe 10X more powerful than the current consoles. It's a huge leap forward. It's gonna drive all the games forward. And so if you're buying a video card that you wanna keep up with and you want 1440p and you want 1440p for the next several years, well, you can sell an arm, a leg, and maybe mortgage your house and buy yourself a 2080 Ti. On the other hand, if you don't have to play every game, if you're okay to be flexible with details, if an average of 60 and the minimums in the four and the minimums around 30s and 40s are acceptable to you, a $500 2070 will do it. If you play more casual and free to play games, this is crazy overkill. Unless you want a 1440p 144 hertz monitor experience to be great, in which case you have no other option than this. If, if you bought one of those, which they're not expensive these days, 1440p at 144 hertz, that's harder to do than 4K is. You allow me to introduce you to your new video card. It's interesting that when we start talking about high-end gaming, either high frame rate or AAA gaming, we run right past the 400R cards, right past the five and 700R price points, and it's like, well, you're either buying the 400R cards or you're buying an 1100R card. These almost don't have a place in the market when you consider those boundaries. I'm sure somebody's gonna disagree with me or have a scenario in which case these make sense. Leave your comment in the comment section below. I cannot reply to everybody down there, but I promise you I do read them and I do find it interesting uh, to see what you all have to say in terms of market placement for these cards. And finally, that brings us to the summary of the video. Which four cards do I actually think are the ones you should consider for 1440p gaming? Yes, way at the end of the video, double gold stars for all of you. Thank you for being patient and watching to this point. Number one, if you wanna play 1440p AAA games today for the next one to two years, or you wanna play non-AAA games, casual games, free-to-play games, or frankly, anything other than the latest AAA games for three plus years, $400 buys you an incredible amount of performance that will last you some period of time beyond today based upon what you play. In fact, if you play World of Tanks, World of Warships, Overwatch, Dota 2, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rainbow Six Siege, these might be slightly overkill, but they will ensure that they give you maybe five plus years of gaming for some of those games in a very, very long time, and they will turn out to be a very good value if you can stretch them to five years. On the other hand, if you have the money and you wanna play the upcoming very cool games that are coming out, if that's your thing, allow me to direct you to your only available options, which are NVIDIA. AMD doesn't compete in this department, at least if you wanna have any longevity. Cyberpunk 2077, yeah, we'll probably play on these, but whatever comes after it won't at 1440p. 
I've got the 2080 Super here, and if you can make some compromises and $700 doesn't make you just want to gag the way $1,100 does, then get a 2080 Super. It's a nice car. It's, it'll do the job for less time than the 2080 Ti will. But I would submit that the top-end card holds its value more. If you, if you look to sell your card in three years, a 2080 Ti will be worth more than a 2080 Super will be. And so the extra $400 you spend today, some portion of that will come back to you in the used value of the card. And if it allows you to get an extra year of gaming out of it, let's say you can go uh, three or four years on this versus two or three on this, depending upon the level of games you wanna play, whatever it is, if it gets you an extra year and is worth more money on resale, is it really that much more expensive? This is for people who can afford to front the money for awesome and then live with it for some period of time. Now we're talking about 1440p here, not 4K. 4K is a different video and that's, that's gonna be a very different conversation. In any case, I appreciate all of you who have watched this. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section down below, including your thought on how I split this video up into three different resolutions. It allowed me to get into much, much more detail. It actually made these videos long anyway because I'm doing this section here, but I am looking forward to reading your comments and to see what you guys all think. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. As I mentioned before, I do read them even if I don't reply to all of them. Our Discord is linked below. For supporters, we have a bunch of wonderful chat channels. Come on over and say hello. It's greatly appreciated. Speaking of which, links in the video description below. Support the channel, shop and or support directly. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, and I will see all of you in the 4K version of this video, also linked down below.